love and light. This is Healthy Talk Show, recording live on Monday, December 16th, 2019. I'm Robert. And I'm Marissa. Show notes will be over at healthytalkshow.com forward slash 42. On this episode of Healthy Talk Show, we have ring security breaches and reports of the U.S. government lying about the war in Afghanistan. But first... Oracle's Open World, which for years has brought in software developers from all over the globe, will no longer be held in San Francisco. The city's tourism bureau, the San Francisco Travel Association, sent out an email telling its members the move of the convention would mean a loss of $64 million to San Francisco. Oh, oh $64 million dollar loss in revenue for San Francisco? Wow! That sucks. Oracle's yeah. moving a conference out of San... Why would they do that? Let's listen on. That's according to a report by CNBC, which says Oracle's conventioneers complained hotels were too expensive and also cited, quote, poor street conditions. <laughs> okay, hotels are expensive and poor street conditions. Hmm. Yeah, I can see why that would make uh, having a convention there unfavorable. <laughs> why would you want to pay a premium price for a hotel if the street conditions are crap? Interesting. Housing is expensive, like our Airbnb is expensive, yeah. everything's expensive here. We talked to some folks at the Moscone Center attending the convention of the American Geophysical Union. The streets seem pretty safe generally, but I have seen a lot of needles around and <laughs> a lot of people sitting on the streets, homeless. Boy, the streets seem safe, but there are a lot of needles around. That doesn't yeah. sound safe to me. That doesn't... That doesn't sound someplace where I'd want to pay a premium. Yeah, just stay in an expensive hotel to dodge needles. Oh, don't step on there. Might, yeah. oh, don't prick. Don't get pricked. Which is concerning. In a statement, Mayor London Breed acknowledged the city's homeless challenges and the investments being made to combat them. She also said that she hopes to work with SF Travel and the Hotel Council to address the high cost of those hotel rooms. And what are one of the things they're trying to do? Let's see. KPX, CBS to help the homeless issue. San Francisco, Bay Area, Oakland official proposes using cruise ship to house homeless. Two at six, one city leader wants to bring a cruise ship to Oakland. What? And it isn't to sail to any exact... Yeah. You have to... I thought this was a joke, No, to be it's not a joke. <laughs> Exotic destination. She wants it to stay right there, anchor it to house the homeless. But certainly with a crisis this big, we should be looking at all the options. President Kaplan says she's been getting calls from cruise ship companies who are retiring old vessels with dirty engines. So a ship that used to cruise can now be docked, plugged in, and they've been used in other cities as hotels, in some situations as emergency housing. Kaplan is referring to the time when FEMA put Hurricane Katrina victims on this cruise ship. And then there's the Queen Mary, docked permanently in Long Beach, being used as a floating hotel. Bookmark that Queen Mary floating hotel in Long Beach. We're going to revisit that one in a second. What? <laughs> yeah, well, we'll revisit that. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just... <laughs> did I step on you? Oh, yeah. Oh, I was going to say... <laughs> You knew what I was going. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm just, this is crazy because luxury cruise ships to house, that just doesn't seem very economical or sustainable. Yeah. My goal is not for us to buy the ship, but rather that the ship operators would negotiate a contract for a dock and then people would pay on a sliding scale basis to stay there. Oh, that sounds like a cash grab. Yeah. Oh, that's not, oh, that's even, wow. No, we're not even proposing to buy it or maintain it ourselves because we as the city can't competently do that. So we're going to pay an outside company to do it. Yeah. That sounds really expensive. Yep. Port of Oakland said they respected Kaplan's desire to address homelessness, but Port of Oakland docks are designed to work cargo ships. There isn't the infrastructure to berth a cruise ship. Safety and security issues at our federally regulated maritime facilities would make residential uses untenable. What the Port of Oakland said is it would be untenable to put them where cargo shipping is taking place. They do have a couple options on land they own where they don't have cargo shipping going on, but there's also the possibility of looking at other docks beyond the Port of Oakland. And ports also have to be secure because of, you know, all the things that can come in. Yeah. <laughs> so the ports are very secure. And, That's uh, true. Just, it's, what, a, what a wild idea. Yeah, plus there have been reports on the carbon footprints of these crude yeah. ships and how much energy it yeah. costs. So. Oh, yeah, and Long Beach Post <laughs> News, check this out. Independent audit shows six million net loss oh my for gosh. Queen Mary operator in 2018. So I don't think... The, they're not doing Queen Mary and Long Beach. Some context: there are it's a historic landmark. That Queen Mary, it was an old cruise ship that got converted into the wartime into a warship. It kicks some ass. 
It's now permanently in Long Beach. It's pretty cool, but still, it's not a really sustainable yeah. business as a floating luxury as as it is now. And it's overpriced as where it is. Precisely. It's overpriced. So I... <laughs> yeah. So it's weird that she made that comparison between yeah, a she's luxury trying, historical Yeah. And then shit. someone using a cruise ship for FEMA, for FEMA yeah. bringing in a cruise ship to house people even on an emergency basis. Yeah. That's... That's, you can use a hotel on an emergency basis too, right. but it's not a sustainable option. Yeah. So. so I don't know. These people are just are they full it, of shit. It just sounds like they <laughs> want to waste money. Yeah. So what you want to have a contract? Yeah. Like, who who so. does this person related to in the cruise ship mm-hmm. industry? That or what? Where where her? Where just yeah. follow the money? Yep. Uh, moving on. Yeah. Cool. Democracy now. French labor protest update. In France, protests are continuing today as workers remain on strike to protest French President Emmanuel Macron's pension overhaul. Unions are vowing to continue the strike into the holiday period, saying the proposal to effectively raise the retirement age is a red line that cannot be crossed. This is 31-year-old train conductor Cécile Ratour, who is participating in the strike. I continue to fight for our pensions because what Prime Minister Philippe said was rubbish. It's a blatant smokescreen. They want to divide and conquer. They want to divide the generations. Yeah. Dang. And I like that they said that raising the retirement age is a red line that won't be crossed. I think she's... Emmanuel yeah. Macron's yeah. pension overhaul. Unions are vowing to continue the strike into the holiday period, saying the proposal to effectively raise the retirement age is a red line that cannot be crossed. That is perfect. Because they keep raising the retirement age Precisely. everywhere else, and it's killing everybody. We need yes. to lower it. In the U.S., what is it, 65 or some crap now? It's going up to 67. It should be 55. Yeah. That well, should be the standard for living. So the, the French are putting their foot down because mm-hmm. their current retirement is 62. And then, of course, what they propose is that sliding scale mm-hmm. where eventually they're planning Because of the on, EU, I'm sure. Of course, mm-hmm. because neighbors it's not fair yeah. why do they get to retire so early and uh-huh. we don't they get to retire early britain mm-hmm. and germany they're already at 67 so that's Ooh. the argument france french oh you're lazy you gotta catch up to everybody else Where, no, the you french doing? are smart they need to low they need to go yeah. the other way and say you know what 62 is too high yeah. i'm getting too old for this you know what we need to lower it to 60 a bunch of people can retire there i need to turn off my synergy give me a second here sorry yeah, yeah but that's what's really interesting is they're putting their foot down and i like the last okay. quote that she said that they're not going to let them divide us yeah they're going to protect so, e- they're going to protect so each other they're all yeah <laughs> that makes me frustrated with the u.s and but how kind divided of our, we become yeah our unions what they what they do is they always get the good benefits for the older generation yep. and then <clears throat> and then the people come in and get the shite and i was I was exposed to that. People yeah. know. They people were warning me. Oh man, you get you got the shit deal, dude. Yeah, it but was sad. In France, they're not standing for that. No, so. they're going to protect the generation. The generation coming in because guess what? How can you expect the same quality of service if you give them less? Precisely. It doesn't make any sense. Actually, you should be giving them more. Uh oh. Let's not talk about that. Aye aye aye. Ah, CNET payroll data for twenty nine thousand Facebook employees was stolen. CNET. Oh, yeah, seen it reporting. The data breach reportedly occurred when someone stole multiple unencrypted physical hard drives from Facebook payroll staffer's what? car. Info on the hard drives included names, bank account numbers, the last four of social security number digits, salaries, bonus amounts, and equity details, the report said. Good job, Facebook. You can't keep anybody's data secure in any form ever. Every, you're just leaking data left and right. Good job, Facebook. Let's trust Facebook. Why do we continue to trust these big companies? And why were they running around with an unencrypted hard drive? Yeah, why were they running around with unencrypted I data? I thought this was a professional company. Exactly. It's enc- encrypt everything. Encrypt uh, your nudes. Encrypt it all. Yes. Oh, now moving on to the ring hacks today. Hacker accessed ring camera inside little girl's room, her family says. I'm your best friend. As eight-year-old Alyssa LeMay stood in her room, a terrifying voice spoke to her. I'm I'm Santa Claus. Don't you want to be my best friend? (laughs) I'm sorry, it's hilarious. (laughs) I'm Santa Claus. It's a great line. Yeah. It's funny. (laughs) I'm just the detail, though, is kind of... Oh, yeah, in the video. If you're not watching the video of this show, HealthyTalkShow.com, go there, watch our video healthytalkshow.com forward slash 42 
and watch this video. It's great because the quality of this rain camera in the house, you could see all the details of this little girl. It's super creepy. Yeah. A horrifying sound coming from this ring security camera installed in the child's bedroom, which she shares with her two sisters. I come upstairs and I hear some banging noise. I was like, who is that? For five minutes, the voice taunting the young girl playing strange music. Even instructing her to destroy her room. You can mess up your room. You can break your TV. <laughs> it's you kind of funny. You oh, it's the funny. The May family installed the camera just days before the device was apparently hacked. I watched the video, and I mean, like, they could watch them sleeping. They could have watched them changing. Yeah. I mean, they could have yeah. seen Why? all kinds of things. Why do you put a camera in your child's room yeah. that's connected to the that internet wirelessly? Like I mean, yeah, why idea. would you do that? Why would you just don't do that? Don't yeah. even put a camera in your child's room, first of all. Why? What do you... Yeah. <laughs> it's just... Well, what do you need to see in there? This just the latest hack of an in-home security camera. Over the weekend, a Florida family says they were spied on in their living room. Can you bring like a web browser oh on my your phone gosh. and then type in the web browser? More on this family you. later. We have another report. And earlier no. this year in Washington State. Stop her call, then the camera. The owner of this Nest camera reported oh. a hacker harassing her family. <laughs> Shut the up. Ness did not respond to our request for comment, but Ring says in the Memphis case, their security was not breached, adding hackers often reuse credentials stolen or leaked from one service on other services. That's true. People do use the same yeah. credentials across the board. Really dumb. Not a good idea. You should probably use a password manager, randomly generate your, your username and your password. Do it real long. <sighs> Next report. KGET News, hateful hacking family berated with racial slurs via ring camera. It's Sunday night. Cooking and catching up with their oldest son through FaceTime was on this Cape Coral couple's agenda. This camera quality in this living room is amazing. Good. Yeah. It is good. You can tell this family has a nice living room. Their living room is beautiful, open floor plan. They have nice two double doors. They have a nice Christmas tree in the corner. You can see they have a nice island. They have they have a really nice setup. Yeah, you can And get you can the see every layout. little detail. <laughs> oh yeah, you can see the whole layout and plan robbing these people. I don't understand why people do this. All of a sudden, um, we heard the siren. Until the safety measure was turned against them, someone was using it to peer into the Browns' private What's life. What's going on, my main man, Shaq? It's your boy, Chance on Nold. Welcome to the Nold cast. What's going the on? The hacker starts talking doing? directly to the... He says, welcome to the Nold cast. The report's not really picking up on that. It's actually a podcast, which we'll visit that in a second. Husband and wife about their son. Wait, wait, so did your child come out black or like kind of like light skin? I don't know. What? Nothing. Who never appeared. Why would he talk? Why are you talking back? Yeah. Rip the, rip the camera off of the wall and destroy right. it immediately. Why would you talk back? I, that is it's just, you're already being monitored. You say, okay, where's my, where, where am I being monitored from? What do I, how do I eliminate that immediately? If in your house, yeah. what if it, the dude's in the closet? I'm not talking to somebody talking to me and they're in the closet. I'm approaching and figure out where the hell the noise is coming from. Why are you responding? I know. What? Oh my gosh. People are. S <sighs> Get it off the internet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Did your child come out black or like kind of like light skin? I don't know. What? <laughs> Nothing. Who never Nothing. appears on this three-minute recording. But Josephine Brown believes the person manipulating their camera was watching for longer than he may yeah. have known. Uh, yeah, if you have a camera on connected to the internet, any... Yeah, you you don't know who's watching and... <sighs> well, you know who's watching. <laughs> a lot of Well, they know who specifically yeah. is watching. It's the Nold cast. <laughs> They're watching us. Because my that's the only way you know I had a son and the only way you know what he looks like. The hacker focuses only on making racial comments. Is your kid a baboon, like the monkey? Spewing from their security camera over and over again. Wait, does your child look like an Oreo? It's very hurtful because, I mean, my son is biracial and Her? the comments oh. he made was really hurtful. Yeah, I agree. Uh, putting a camera in your house is really hurtful. I agree yeah. with you 100%. You were hurting your family by putting a camera in your house. You connected to the internet like that. You may want to reconsider pr yeah, protecting your family better. She's the one that exposed Yeah, she did it. She, put, she did. poked the hole in their security, yeah, so she should only look at herself. I don't know why she's Educate yourself. Spin o it. Open up a book. I don't know. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's not 
It's just <sighs> weird how they spun it. And yeah, and it's, oh, it's their, no, yeah, you, you, you put it up. You put it on the internet. They scanned it. They found it. Up with the hateful invasion of privacy. Can you bring, like, a web browser up on your phone and then type in the website that I tell you? No. no. Why? Why is he? <laughs> yeah, he keeps responding to the dog as a toy in his mouth, oh, the German like, Shepherd. Oh, looking yeah, dog. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great quality. I'll leave you and your family alone. Or I could do this. Oh, oh my God. I like your dog. The camera batteries are ripped out. Hey, go to Noel. The Browns called Ring immediately. The company it took way to too long to rip the battery. Yeah, out. you let them bring and trigger your alarm, and it, still they can trigger your alarm without the camera being on, dude. If it's all connected to the same yeah. freaking, you need to disconnect that hub. That ring hub and turn off your internet and yeah. disconnect your router. <laughs> you need to really reassess what you've got connected. I requests, but did tell the family, quote, the email address and password of one of your external accounts was exposed in a data breach. Ring believes someone used that information to gain access into their account. Josephine says she is constantly changing the Wi-Fi password and believes the company needs to step up. Fixing it, put more security stuff on there, do more updates on the cameras. Maybe. Yeah, update the camera more. How is <laughs> That's that the, yeah, help? update the camera more. That's the solution. Just update the camera. <laughs> that's the solution don't remove the that's camera just update it addressing how they got in <laughs> yeah it's way. not I'm sure everything you know runs the way it's supposed to but i don't i don't know i went to a tech expert michelle bordoff says there's one trusted way to keep your system safe wired cannot be hacked Somebody True. has to be in your home hardwired to your modem to see anything on your network kind of true but these hardwired systems that are usually IP, if you can view it on your phone, then you're uh, still exposed. So true if you're not on yeah. the internet. So keep it off the internet. It's true. The internet, you need to really think about it. Do you need stuff on the internet? I think of the internet as like a repository of entertainment and knowledge. That's it. Yeah. I don't need it anywhere else. I don't need it in my thermostat, refrigerator. I don't know. Yeah. It frustrates me that they market these cameras for everything too. Like now you need cameras to watch mm -hmm. your dog. No, yeah. you don't need to watch your dog. No. It's, that's they're just, just creating a market. They're telling you you need yeah. something that you don't actually need. And, and then, getting you to spend money on it. And guess what? You're stupid enough to spend money. You don't need a yep. DNA test your dog either. <laughs> Another market that doesn't need to exist that people are spending large amounts of money on instead of, well, I don't know, helping the homeless. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> it's just, and you invite this huge security breach into your and home. And then you complain about it. Yeah. I'd be too embarrassed. Fuck you. I don't want the news in my house. I'm already too embarrassed. I was stupid enough to do that. Get out of my house. <laughs> you know, true. these people are dumb enough to go on TV and talk about it. What? <laughs> ah, let's talk about the real issue. Vice News reporting. Thank you. The Noldcast is a podcast live stream to Discord. It's a show in which hackers take over people's ring and nest smart home cameras and use their speakers to talk to and harass their unsuspecting owners. In the example above, well, whatever, Chance blared noises and shouted racist comments at the Florida family. Software to hack ring cameras has recently become popular on the forum. The software churns through previously compromised email addresses and passwords to break into ring cameras at scale. This has led to a recent spat of hacks that have occurred both during the podcast and at other times, several of which have been covered by local media outlets. If it's a podcast, where's the RSS feed? I don't think it's a <laughs> podcast, but this is super creepy. Think, think of the yeah. implications of this. They could be... First of all, you could really mess with people who are superstitious, think they're a ghost in their house. That'd be hilarious. You could be like, hey, I see you. I'm a ghost. Think of how many people are freaking out right now because they're, yeah. they're hacked and people, they're not, they're just freaking, they're trip, tripping people out. Think about yeah. that. You could really freak, freak people out. Check out this. Hey, Noldcast fans, this is posted on their Discord. We need to calm down on the ring trolling. Yeah. We have three investigations. The two of us are already probably fucked. Drop suggestions on what else we should do. It will still happen, just a much smaller scale. Thanks, the Noldcast. Oof. Good luck, Noldcast. You're, uh, you start getting that kind of press. It's doing illegal stuff, and you are hurting people. So, you know, you're doing bad things. You need to stop yeah. at the end of the day. But people also need to stop being stupid. Yeah. Stop exposing themselves. And they're keeping instances of all these passwords being leaked, data being leaked. And then we Disconnect still... Disconnect yourself from all that stuff. Yeah. Get, the, get that stuff out of your house. We, we, I don't know why we expect protections or privacy. I don't know why either. I don't know why we trust our government. Yeah. Ha! <laughs> oh. Segway. Post-report the Afghanistan papers. The 
Washington Post ran a really long piece, long investigation. It's kind of hard to explain, so we're going to do this here. United States uh, attacked Afghanistan October 2001. The mission was simple, defeat Al-Qaeda. Three years, a legal battle to require a trove of transcripts. Audio recorded Washington Post reporter Quaid Craig Whitlock. That's the guy. Talks to host... Or, Martin yeah. Bowers? Yeah, <laughs> just about these papers. It's it's a very long and complicated... Basically, these are kind of like exit interviews that were kind of quotes and special interviews that were pulled from leaders talking about how they misled the public on the war in Afghanistan. Let's take a listen. The war in Afghanistan is now entering its 19th year, making it the longest-running war in U.S. history. I covered the Pentagon for several years as a beat reporter. That is Craig Whitlock. And I was a foreign correspondent before that. I would go to Afghanistan sometimes. And one thing you would always hear commanding generals say is we're making progress or we're turning the corner. The past eight months have seen important but hard-fought progress in Afghanistan. Since I spoke to you almost 16 months ago, we have made much progress. 2011 was a real turning point. But we are at a crucial turning point. I think it's possible that by the end of this year, we will have turned a corner. This would happen month after month. Damn. <laughs> a lot of corners hilarious. being turned there. Yeah. <laughs> month, year after year. Now, last night, I gave a, a speech in which I said that we have turned a corner. So I wouldn't suggest to you that we have turned the corner, but I will say we, we've come a long way since 03. You never hear the commanding general say, we're losing. First, let me just say that uh, we're not losing a war out here by any means. <laughs> the war is not going well. I feel like, you know, we're making some steady progress. Yeah, we're doing okay. Don't worry about it. Look over here. Yeah. <laughs> just What the fudge? <laughs> I think we have turned the corner. And I think also that the Taliban recognize that that corner has been turned. Are you telling me that the corner has been turned? Yes. Turn the corner. Now, looking ahead to 2018, as President Ghani said, he believes we have turned the corner. And I agree. Some lawmakers like Senator Warren noted this. General Miller, we supposedly turned the corner so many times that it seems now we're going in circles. <laughs> That's a great line. Yeah. Good job, Elizabeth Warren. That was funny. Exposing the lies oh. to the public. Oh, can we can we just yes. point out that they called it a war? Oh, yeah, if you want to go there, the war. Yeah, That's true. I just want to mention it's that. It's not actually a war because the last time Congress passed joint resolutions saying that a state of war existed was June 5th, 1942, when the U.S. declared war on Bulgaria, Hungary, and Romania. Since then, the U.S. has used the term authorization to use military force, as in the case against Iraq in 2003. I just used a Google search and I typed in last declaration of war. Yeah. And that's what I got from Wikipedia. Right on Google. Interesting. Yeah, interesting how this is a non-war war. Yeah, war non. That's true. The Afghanistan paper. Yeah, it's true. It's all about. Yeah, it's not even a war. It's a, the longest war that has not been a war. Yeah. And we're just throwing money and lives at it. That's beautiful. Exposing lies to the public. Next clip. My assessments weren't good. It, it wasn't. Things are going well. Never, ever. We are participating in conflict. We are not really here to win. Thousands of pages, documents, and recordings like these, laying out in private what was never said in public. They really do bring to mind the Pentagon Papers, which were the Defense Department's top secret history of the Vietnam War. To me, this is kind of like the Vietnam effect. After 50 years and counting in Afghanistan, I don't think we're any better organized than we were back then. That's not good. Oh, yeah. Comparing it to Vietnam... Yeah, they compared a lot of the misreporting and you know, pretending that we're winning as to what they did in Vietnam. Which is amazing in the our data age of the internet information. Yeah, yeah we have all the information. We know everything. Do we? Yeah, but they hmm. say they just skewed the reports and Interesting. just showed the data to say what they want, that we're winning. Ooh. In these interviews, we hear from ambassadors and generals and senior diplomats, people like Michael Flynn and Ryan Crocker and Nicholas Burns, who said this war was a mess. And after 03 4, once we're fully engaged in both wars, I can't remember us ever saying, should we be there? 
are we being useful? Are we succeeding? The just severity of corruption in our own system, I think, is just unbelievable. And our strategy failed, and we didn't know what we were doing. They literally used those words. Yeah. Well, on one <laughs> hand, it Jeez. makes sense because people have known the war hasn't been going well, which is why we've been there for 18 years. To hear or read these people who are in charge of the war admitting how the war was screwed up and that what the American people were being told about the wars wasn't true. Yeah, yeah that was also shocking. Yeah. It, these are some pretty big revelations that media outlets aren't going to pick up on too much. Like they're trying to back away from it because it's very controversial. Yeah, but they're they're talking about how from the beginning there was never even a clear defined enemy. No, well, one there wasn't. Knew. What do you? What's the yeah. enemy? How, we obviously, if you're talking about if this was a real war and it was us against Afghanistan, we would have wiped them off of the planet. We have the strongest military in the world by far, but that's not what the war. It's not a war, and we're not yeah. a war Afghanistan. We're not actually. We're fighting something that's imaginary. Yeah. We're just there. <laughs> Wasting lives and money and resources. And, and they didn't have a, even a clear definition of what a win yeah. means. So how do you achieve that? Yeah. If there's no definition of what the win is, then how do you achieve the win? I don't... Uh... All right, next clip. It took three years and Michael Flynn. Yeah, that Michael Flynn. Well, it took three years. So we started asking for them. There's a little bit of a backstory. Uh, in how we obtained the records. In August of 2016... We'd heard that one of the people they interviewed was Lieutenant General Michael Flynn. And at that like, time... Like the Michael Flynn. The Michael Flynn. At that time, he was. this was during the presidential campaign between Trump and Hillary Clinton. And Michael Flynn, just a couple months after he had gone up on stage at the Republican convention and said, lock her up about Hillary Clinton. We do not need a reckless president who believes she is above the law. Lock her up. That's right. <laughs> Get, that's right. Lock her up. Totally political. In this long interview about the Afghan war, Flynn has some political baggage these days, but you have to understand he was as plugged in on military intelligence as anyone in the armed forces for 15 years. He was in charge of military intelligence in Afghanistan when he served there. He was the director of the Defense Intelligence Agency. We wanted to know, what did he say? He probably knows a little bit if he's 15 years military intelligence. Yeah. He probably knows a little bit about what's going on in Afghanistan, I'd say. So we asked this agency, the inspector general, well, we, we heard you did an interview with Flynn. It had never come out in public. We just heard about it. We'd like to get our hands on that and see what he said. And at first, the agency said, sure, we, that shouldn't be a problem. But then it dragged out and dragged out, and they finally said no. Long story short. No. <laughs> What? No, you can't say no. It's a public record. We had to sue them for it in federal court under the Freedom Information Act. We ultimately won. At that point, we'd asked for all their interviews because we found out there were hundreds more. And we thought, oh, well, we won in federal court. We'll, we'll get the other ones. But they still refused to give us the other ones. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So they win and they say, no, 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 no. It's just, it reminds me of email servers. So we just sued them again. <laughs> then the, the next trick they did is they withheld most of the names of the people who were interviewed, which we thought was really important. So we're still in a fight in court over identifying who all these people were, but we've been able to figure out a lot of them. So what was... Damn. <laughs> so you just got to listen and say, hmm, listen, do some... Okay, I know who that is. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> What's your reaction when you started to hear what had been discussed in these interviews? Well, the first one we got was Michael Flynn, you know, after our first lawsuit. So we had a transcript of what he said, and we had his audio recording of what he said. And I'll, and I'll draw you a picture here. So. This is Michael Flynn. We started the war, and strategically... We focused on where. Where did they come from? Okay, well, they came from Afghanistan. Okay, so let's go to Afghanistan. And then we, of course, we went to where, called Iraq. And it was like, okay, well, why do we go to Iraq, you know? Why? We haven't really answered why. So I'm trying to answer why in my own head. Why do they hate us? Why did they attack us? 
trying to address why, to look backwards as to where. Politically, we are still arguing about why. You know, Flynn's a pretty colorful character. He's very blunt and direct, and he was harshly critical of the war. So when you look at Afghanistan, every single measurable activity is failing. If John Campbell were to sit here today and go, Mike, it's bullshit. John Campbell at this time is a commander of U.S. forces in the war. We've built more schools. We've got more kids and, you know, we've got more cars on the road. You know, really? Flynn knew intimately well what was going on in Afghanistan. So for him to say that what the public was being told about how well the war was going was completely at odds with the reality on the ground for year after year, that really got our attention. Oh, it would. Yeah. So we got a war chart here before we look at the report or the article. This just shows what we're looking at. Since 2001, an estimated 157,000 people have been killed in the war in Afghanistan. 3,814 U.S. contractors, 2,300 U.S. military personnel, 1,145 NATO and coalition troops, 43,000 Afghan civilians, 64,000 Afghan security forces. Yeah, a lot of civilians, a lot of security forces. That's Those are pretty bad numbers. Lots of money being spent. Yeah. And whatever number you think you know about how much is being spent, you don't know. Yeah. We don't know. Nobody knows how much money is being spent. You can't audit the Pentagon. Good luck. Look, look at all those contractors, though, yeah, too. Yeah, the contractors. That's a shocking one. Yeah, that was almost... Those best. are the ones that get paid. The contractors get paid big, big yeah. money. Almost double the U.S. Yeah. military personnel. Yeah. Sad. It's, and for what? What's the goal? Is it... Are we just trying to steal natural resources like everyone says? That's pretty shitty. And no one seems to know. <laughs> you know, that's the goal. Yeah, maybe be honest about it, I guess. Yeah. Maybe you have the public behind you. I don't know. Why lie to the public? It's just, what is the goal? What's the point? And then we have the Washington Post exclusive, a secret history of the war in Afghanistan revealed. Yeah. You pulled a few quotes that you thought were interesting. So, uh... A lot of this is compiled from this lessons learned. So it's a bunch of interviews basically over the whole war. <laughs> it's like a program the government set up yeah, to learn about the war. And they basically found that it was going pretty poorly. Yeah. <laughs> is what the overall conclusion is. Yeah. Um, so some of the summaries that were there, like we mentioned, they didn't know who their enemy was or what the goal it was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So There's a lot of confusion with that. And then they threw so much money at this. The United States allocated $133 billion, billion to build up Afghanistan. $133 billion. Billion. And we could house all of the homeless with that item yeah. in the United States right now. And that is more than it spent adjusted for inflation to revive the whole of Western Europe with the Marshall Plan after World War II. Holy what? crap. That is crazy. And then, so now we talk about the contractors, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and some of these contractors, of course, unidentified, said that he was expected to spend $3 million a day for projects in a single Afghan district, roughly the size of a U.S. county. Wow. $3 million a day. Just spend yeah. it. Just spend it. And he said that, uh, I, he contacted a lawmaker and said, could he reasonably spend that amount of money back home? And he said, no, that, that it's just too much money. Yeah. And, what would you do? You'd have to build a yeah. lot of shit and just take it down and keep building. And that's what they do. Yeah. They build roads and they take them down and move them. That's what they do. Yeah. They o order toner off of these or on the GSA accounts, the federal buy buyer accounts. They're so poorly set up where you just keep buying printers instead of buying toner. So you get all these printers backing up. Because yeah. then you don't have any toner. Because you don't buy the toner, you're just buying new printers. Bop, bop, buy a new printer, buy a new. It's so wasteful. And then what was also interesting is somehow the U.S. military failed to realize until it was pretty much well established mm -hmm. that the Afghan government, led by President, President Ahmad Karzai, had self-organized into a kleptocracy. Essentially, they were so corrupt, they were paying for positions at every level. And we were f helping that out. Yeah. And they mm -hmm. expected to earn that money back by getting backroom deals and gun trading perfect and just, we're funding all that yeah under our noses because we are we know everything and then they also mentioned how they lost the control of the opiums because of course that was basically the only business that was booming they had no good strategy on how to deal with it yeah. the u.s just burned the, their poppy fields which made them angry mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
inside with the Taliban. <laughs> so yeah, that just no idea what they were doing essentially. And they came in trying to set up this democracy, but they kind of say, "Well, the the people were ready for democracy. That's not how." Yeah, it's not how it's structured. It's not yeah. historically how it's worked. Right. Yeah, just because you know better doesn't mean. Just because you think you know better doesn't mean you do. Yeah. And that's the problem with us. We're nation building. We always do it. And we need to cut it out. Because again, when we have homeless people on the streets, we can't, we're in no place to be building nations. Right. We have people who can't have, don't have access to healthcare. We're in no place to be building nations. Why are we doing this? Why are we, why? Why? Is someone going to ever answer this question for the American people and tell us why we're in Afghanistan? I don't know. And, And what you're saying is why... Well, they mentioned when anyone tried to kind of question their mm-hmm. strategies or the corruption of what mm-hmm. was going on, that was brushed aside. Oh, we can't talk about that. You know, we can't actually fix the real problems. Yeah. And figure out why this is failing so massively. Interesting. And, and they also mentioned uh, when they would come home, they just say, oh, yeah, mission accomplished. You know, everyone, they go out, they ship out for their duty, come back, mission accomplished. But what's the mission? Right, yeah, what yeah did, so what, what, did what did you actually accomplish? That's weird because don't, yeah, shouldn't there be some goals and like milestones, yeah, career they, goals or something? I don't know. And uh, if you remember back in the Obama era, mm-hmm. there was a troop surge of from 2009 to 2011. Mm-hmm. And they they were just pumping out statistics trying to show that the surge was working. That oh yeah, more people are dying because we we're putting more pressure on them. We're putting more yeah. pressure, so we're about to win. We're about to win. We're about to win. Yeah. Yeah, but that. And now Trump is actually trying to pull us out of Afghanistan, and all we can hear about is impeach Trump. Yeah. Impeach Trump, and this is coming out. If you haven't heard about this, and all you've heard about is impeach Trump, there's a problem. There's a real problem with the media. That's are true. we done? Can one, I go into how less, people give, should give us love? Yes. Yeah. So, by the way, there were 3,800 Afghan civilians killed in the most recent year. So mm-hmm. that's the worst, the highest in the past decade. So this just shows us it's still not getting better. Yeah. But, yeah. It's but, not getting better. And nothing's getting better. How is this happening? How We have the media. Isn't the media supposed to be on this stuff all the time? Shouldn't they be covering that? Oh, no, they're biased and they're controlled yeah. by corporations trying to impeach Trump for some reason. Yeah, so help support us, HealthyTalkShow.com. Help spread the love, too. Love and sh- give us support, HealthyTalkShow.com slash support. Our show is value for value. What could be more valuable than the information you receive here? Again, we're unbiased, commercial-free commercial free we provide a decent product <laughs> and you show you can show us some love by i don't know emailing us ask at healthy we love hearing from you healthy forward slash socials help us out there we have very little social media presence if you can help us in that form please help us out we need social media love we record Healthy Talk Show live on Mondays and now Fridays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's 3 a.m. UTC over at HealthyTalkShow.com forward slash live. Join the fun. Give us love. Love and light. Love and light.